What makes a successful company? Is it being a first mover in a massive market? Is it raising hundreds of millions of dollars? Or is it having a billion dollar valuation? And finally, being so popular that you become a verb to your customers. The startup which we are discussing today has all of these. It was one of the earliest entrants into India's hyperlocal delivery market. The startup has raised close to half a billion dollars in funding. And if we talk about its valuation, it was on its way to become a unicorn. And finally, the startup can lay claim onto something which very very few indian companies can that it became a verb for the customers the fact that you can be a verb is uh, it's fairly goose bumpy and as you would have guessed by now from the title and thumbnail of this video we are talking about the journey of dunzo how a startup that had it all is now on the verge of shutting down two of its co-founders have quit employees haven't received salaries for the last 6 months and the company is now facing legal notices by other companies for its pending dues all of this and more in this episode of backstage with millionaires Dunzo was started at a time when city life in India looked very different. There was no concept of hyper local delivery. In fact, getting your food delivered was a novelty for Indians. Zomato had started delivering food in the same year, and Swiggy was still figuring out the first version of its app. Kabir Biswas was 30 years old at this time and had seen little success with his first startup Hopper, which was a location-based coupon service. Think of it like Groupon without the internet. The company was eventually bought out by Hike, and this gave Kabir some time to sit back and think about his next startup idea see kabir was very inspired by uber how you can call a cab with just one click in a phone and he thought of an app that could get everything done for you with just one click i actually honestly think we should all give credit to uber for the amount of on demand that actually exists in all of our lives and so if you could press a button and get a get a cab thesis was pretty simple saying ke why don't you press a button and get everything else why is that not possible he pitched this idea to his friends and three of whom became his co-founders there was this guy who said that hey you know i have this idea where i want to you know how you have these 10 different things that you want to do for yourself and you're not able to get them done uh, in a week um, i said yes i have the problem he was like you know i want to I, i want to start a service which where all your tasks can be just done and that was it danzo started as a whatsapp group where people would just text what they needed to get done and kabir would do it himself in the early days sometimes from 5 am in the morning to 1 am in the night and during one of these whatsapp deliveries kabir ended up delivering an order to sahil kini of lightrock who liked their story so much that he became their first investor after receiving the funds danzo grew quickly from 15000 monthly orders in 2016 they scaled to 2 million orders by 2021 that's more than 130x growth but this growth came at a cost and if you take a look at their financials closely you'll see the problem see danzo had made just 88 crore rupees in revenue between the financial year of 2018 to 2021 but their losses had crossed 750 crore rupees basically danzo was losing 7.5 rupees for every rupee it was earning in revenue their sole focus was at this time was to gain more subscribers the year 2020 changed indian hyper local delivery in a big way danzo's active users almost doubled from 27 lakh in 2019 to 51 lakh in 2020 and that was not all their financials were finally taking a turn for the good just look at this graph for the first time since 2018 danzo's losses had actually shrunk while their revenue continued to grow but right at this moment danzo sensed a new opportunity quick commerce it was a billion dollar opportunity and danzo was in the perfect place to adopt this new delivery model they had a massive customer base and they had delivery partners and so danzo raised a massive funding round worth 40 million dollars and launched danzo daily to capitalize on on this opportunity but somewhere down the road this new shiny opportunity became the first reason for danzo's failure you see quick commerce needs a very different infrastructure with hyper local delivery danzo was simply picking up stuff from neighborhood shops and delivering them to their customers it was a simple business but the quick commerce business runs on dark store model where you open a dark store in high density areas so that you can deliver the goods in the shortest time possible this means they had to spend tons of money to add hundreds of these dark stores or warehouse houses when they had still not managed to turn their hyper local business profitable and also danzo wasn't the only one going after the quick commerce market swiggy's instamart zomato's blinkit tata's big basket and zepto were all going after the same market which quickly became overcrowded danzo lost its exclusive factor as soon as they moved into this space then there was another factor where danzo was lagging behind money unlike danzo its competitors had so much money and big names to fund their rapid growth and corner this emerging market 
And that's exactly what happened. Between FI20 and FI23, Dunzo raised more than $400 million and used all of this money to open around 130 dark stores. But in spite of that, their market share in the quick commerce segment was negligible. Just look at this graph. Almost all of the quick commerce market is distributed between the top four. Swiggy, Instamart, Zomato's Blinkit, Zepto and Big Basket. And while trying to compete in this quick commerce space, not only had Dunzo run out of money, but ended up committing suicide in early 2022, when they raised a $240 million funding round led by Reliance, even though they didn't know it at the time. See, Dunzo was desperate at this time, and they needed some quick money to survive in this hyper-competitive sector. And so Reliance came as a savior and took almost 26% stake in Dunzo for $200 million. But there was a catch. By acquiring 26% stake, Reliance was able to get veto powers against any big decision in the company, like share issues or acquisitions. And this meant that in future, Dunzo could not take any big decision without Reliance's approval. And that's exactly what happened. When Dunzo decided to raise their next funding round, Reliance simply refused over valuation disagreement. Things only went from bad to worse when two of Dunzo's co-founders decided to jump the ship. And right now, Dunzo is trying everything to survive. According to reports, they have shut down their quick commerce business across every major city except for Bengaluru, where they still have seven dark stores operational. But for the most part, Dunzo has gone back to the hyper-local delivery model and given up on their quick commerce dreams. They have even given up their Bengaluru office. But the fact is, none of this is enough. Dunzo needs to raise a big funding round to survive. Their monthly burn is over 100 crore rupees. And according to the report, they have less than 500 crores in the bank, which means they have money for only five months. Finally, what can we learn from Dunzo's mistake? Mistakes. I think lessons are pretty clear. Don't lose your USP, which is your unique selling proposition. See, Dunzo was the king of hyperlocal. It became a verb to people. Everyone knew them. But when they moved into quick commerce, they got lost in the crowd. They lost their edge. Next lesson is that you should first be operationally profitable in your core business before you venture out into new business segments. Take the example of EdTech. Startups like Unacademy had expanded into multiple segments from test preparation to K-12 coaching. But as their revenue grew, so did their losses. And now, an academy is going back to its core business. And they're shutting down every other segment that failed to find a product market fit. Building a sustainable core business can help you fund your new ventures. Finally, when you're going up against heavily funded companies, you need to make sure you have the right investors and VCs whose interests align with yours. So while Instamart had Swiggy, Blinkit had Zomato, and Zepto had investors like Stepstone Group, Y Combinator, and Goodwater Capital, Dunzo did not have a partner like that. In desperation, they had to raise money from Reliance, which is more of a strategic investor with its own agenda. So that's all from my side in this video. Let me know your thoughts on this wild journey of Dunzo in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.